Hey guys, today I want to talk a little bit about optimization in general and the two different kind of ways, uh, the main ways of doing topology optimization in Inspire and what this means in the broader sense of optimization. So let's start from the very beginning. Optimization is whenever you want to minimize or maximize a certain quantity and you may have some constraints and you have to have some variables you can change to influence your objective the thing you want to minimize or maximize. So let's make that a little bit more easy to grasp. You have topology optimization here on this cantilever beam. The design variables are each and every element I have in this model can be switched on or switched off. Switched on means should be there. Switch off means can be left out, cut it out, it's a hole. Now, um, the objective would be in this case, you can see it here, this is the goal, the quantity we want to maximize in this case, the stiffness. So it means get the most stiff design possible. And now this cannot stand alone because there's a trivial solution for it. Just leave everything in. That's the most stiff design, job done. Now you want to have a certain specified amount of mass, which then the solver can distribute. That means you just say here, you have this constraint, the mass target should be 5%. So 95% gets left out. That means the remaining 5%, they must be distributed in the model. And if you just see on the result of this optimization, you see that's more or less uh, 5%. We could go deeper and why this may be more, but um, that's not a, not the topic for today. And um, yeah, we have this. And we can just see what this is, what it looks like, right? This is the 5% it's, um, distributed in, uh, in the model in the design space. So that would be one way of doing things. The other way, which is pretty common is not maximize for stiffness, but minimizing the mass. And also here you can you cannot really set a volume constraint here because uh, you say, I want the volume to be minimized. So there should be another constraint. And for the Hyperworks, uh, OptiStruct, HyperMesh uh, folks, they know that pretty well because you have maybe then static stress or static displacement. In Inspire, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit easier. Um, and what, what you're doing here is you're defining a safety factor. But that also means that your forces, they have to produce realistic results because at the beginning with this example here, I had just a thousand Newton and this was steel and the measurements were 200 by 200 uh, by 600, I think, millimeters. Yeah, so um, that's not really producing much of a uh, stress really. So if I do that, I get optimization results, which are not really, um, a thing <laughs> because they're just telling me all right there's nothing here there's nothing to optimize and also there's a message but if you increase it and then set a realistic um loads in here for realistic boundary conditions and stuff you get a result and this result just let me tell you a little bit more about it so minimizing mass with a safety factor means more or less a stress constraint and this is a lot harder to converge than a compliance-based optimization. So it's a more difficult approach, um, but it is also used in industry just to, to get this straight. Um, but this are, these are the two ways. So maximizing stiffness with a defined volume constraint or minimizing the mass with a constraint of a displacement or stress. In this case, it's a stress, display, a stress constraint. Now let's look at this example again. What you can see um, compared to compared to the other one, for sure you cannot compare it with 5% um, initial design volume because this is highly dependent on the load. If I would make the load a lot less, there would be a lot less material. And for the same for the same load, no, you cannot really make a statement about that. But um, for for this kind of design you see there's a lot more volume because the load is in this case high enough to make a demand for this so this is more than five percent of the of the design volume but if you would make that equal 
so that you have this kind of fraction of the design put in as a constraint for the maximized stiffness, it will still look very different. You can see here the mass is concentrated more towards the middle. Um, it's more shaped like an eye beam here. You can clearly see that, which is plausible, comparing that you want to have stiffness. Um, um, well, if not stiffness, a cantilever beam. Well, eye beams are pretty much standard way of doing things. You want to have geometry away from the center line to increase the inertia moment. That makes sense, and you have to combine this in the middle with a with a with a thick rib. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, compare that to the initial five percent compliance based optimization. It has just two slight things here in the middle and um, what else also you can see there's a lot more sharp angles here in case of this one you have very very wide radiuses for here and that's because of the stress constraint because stress always gets higher if you make the change in shape if you just go over here if you make that too suddenly if you make it like very smoothly, very wide of a radius for this, um, then it's a lot better for stress. But on the other side, what also has to be mentioned is that this is highly dependent on your mesh size. So stress and mesh size, well, they are correlated, right? And you really don't know where you want to have the fine detailed mesh until you see the shape. So this is a little bit of a struggle, but so you, you have to check it afterwards anyway. That's that's for sure. But you can see the different kind of approaches here. And I just wanted to make that clear to talk a little bit about those kind of different ways of, of optimizing your topology, how they can look different and how they are defined in a broader context of the optimization. So if you have any questions about this more detailed, whatever, just leave them in the comments I know this topic is quite broad and um, there's a lot of questions you could ask, um, but we make the best of it. So I hope this video helped a lot of guys of you and um, yeah, stay tuned for the next one and uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye guys.